Can you tell us, uh, can you give us a little bit of the inside story of Carrot in a Box? Sure. <laughs> Picture the scene, the cat's countdown. Uh, no, it was the cat's, cat's office, right? The regular 8 out of 10 cats. And uh, we were doing a Christmas special, and we had made, I think, 20 episodes that year, and we were out of idea. <laughs> and someone said, we've got this idea for a game show. They thought it was going to be an ITV <laughs> game show called Carrot in a Box. They were, like, clearly on something. And they went, well, we could play that. It's Christmas, why don't we play games? And they pitched it to me and, and John Richardson and Sean Locke, and we, me and John went, oh, I don't really think there's anything in it. Mm. Mm. And Sean went, we should do that. <laughs> and then he did, and not only did he win, he psychologically destroyed John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, ruined him. Absolutely ruined him. I mean, it's such a fun show to make. I mean, obviously, the, I get asked all the time about Rachel on the show, which is an odd... Yeah, this is Love what I get. <laughs> I'll be in like, I'll be in a hotel uh, or, or a bar, whatever, late at night. Guys won't even say hello to me. They'll just come up to me and go, have you fucked Rachel Riley? <laughs> and you go, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got a promise not to tell her. <laughs> she just thinks she gets sleepy when she drinks. <laughs> That's a joke, obviously. But I'm not saying I wouldn't. I mean, obviously it's never going to happen, is it? Rachel's in a happy marriage. I'm also in a relationship. <laughs> uh, it's never going to happen, but if it did, I would, I, would, I would ride that like a stolen bike. I, I don't want to be crude because there's younger people in, but what I'm saying is I would crawl over broken glass to suck the cock of the last man that fucked her. I, no, but all I'm saying is, please, She's a very intelligent woman, and she's beautiful, and she's fun. She's got a great sense of humour. So what I'm saying is, I would, I would fuck her until the neighbours complained about the smell. <laughs> Just trying to be honest here. I, <laughs> she's so fit, I'd fuck her dad. Uh, or, they, <laughs> here's the thing with that. My favourite thing about those jokes or whatever, and the thing with Rachel is uh, we're legit really good friends. So whenever I write a joke about her or do a joke about her on stage... I always call her and go, I've, uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> all right, Rach, how's Pasha, how's the kids, all right, yeah, and I've just written a joke about you, go on, aww, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about how I'd fuck your dad. <laughs> I'm kind of glad, she's I'm kind so of relieved cool. to know that, that they're, you know, she's on board with it. Oh, she's, yeah, she's totally cool, you know, I, actually, so is Susie Dent's great on the show as well, I mean, Christ, she can take a joke. And a dick. No. <laughs> that came out of just being, when you're in a writing room and you're doing a show like that and we're writing jokes about Rachel and Susie every week, yeah. we just ran out of ideas. And one day in the writing room, I just went, what if Susie's a slag? <laughs> and we just, the notion of her, this nicest woman in the world, we went, what if she's just, the, uh, just a cock goblin slut? <laughs> and, and, we, and we just fell about laughing at the idea. Clearly not the case. And she's gone, yeah, fine. She's made Dictionary Corner her own. Because now it vibrates. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, oh. just to turn the tables for a moment, perhaps on behalf of Susie and Rachel, maybe we should change what we're talking about. Maybe I could ask you about how it felt to sort of write in the book, to really open up about your, shall we say, financial journey. <laughs> I mean, that is the nicest. That question has ever been phrased. <laughs> yeah, I think if you bought a, a biography by me and I didn't mention being publicly shamed over tax, you would feel shortchanged. Very much like HMRC did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got to... You've got to... I mean, it, I mean listen, I, I did it. I had to, held my hands up. I apologised, paid it back, but it couldn't have gone any worse. People are interested, I think, though, in... Do you want to know how much money I saved in tax? Yeah. Like the actual figure? You interested to know? Yeah. Fuck all. <laughs> Despite quite a lot of effort on my part. It, it couldn't have gone any worse. I'm the only person in this room, I'm confident saying it, the only person in this room that would have been better off financially taking advice from a Nigerian general over email. <laughs> <laughs> I, every day's a school day, though. Something like that happens, and uh, you learn a thing or two. You know, I've become quite the expert in tax. 
Oh, I'll give you advice on it right now. If you get a letter through from HMRC, do the responsible thing, pop it in the recycling. <laughs> Don't worry about the letter, they will send another letter. Okay. Those cunts love a letter. <laughs> if, on the other hand, keep and peel for this, if the Prime Minister of the country that you live in breaks off from the G20 summit, he's in a meeting with the 19 most important people in the world. And he comes out early to a press conference where he talks about nothing other than your personal tax affairs. That is going to be a problem. <laughs> Although, in my defence, I never fucked a pig. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Now, there's a scientific theory that states you laugh 30 times more when you're in a room with other people than when you're watching something on a screen. So why not come and see me live? It's jimmycar.com for tickets and I'm pretty much everywhere. See you then.